Every website includes a variety of images. Having too many images on your website can slow it down, resulting in losing potential clients and users. It could also harm its SEO performance, giving your website a negative score on search engines such as Google. To prevent this, it's crucial to understand how to use specific image formats and how to minimize image sizes while maintaining quality. In this video, I will explain how different image formats works, what are their use cases, and how to reduce file sizes of your images. Let's begin with image formats. In this video, I will go over four image formats that are most commonly used. JPEG, PNG, SVG, and WebP. All of these image formats have their unique use cases. Let's talk about these image formats for a moment. Starting with JPEG. Its main benefits are those that it offers lossy compression, meaning that it can reduce file size considerably, but at the expense of some quality. The second benefit is that it's well suited for photographs and complex images with lots of colors and gradients. Now, after talking about these benefits, let's say a few words about drawbacks. First on our list is loss of quality. Each time you save an image as JPEG, it loses some quality. This is especially noticeable with texts or sharp contrasts. Second thing is no transparency. JPEGs do not support transparent backgrounds. Moving on from discussing transparent backgrounds, let's explore PNG, a format well known for this feature. When we talk about advantages of this format, first on the list is well known transparency. PNG supports transparent backgrounds, which can be crucial for logos, icons, and other images that need to be overlaid on various backgrounds. Second one is sharpness. This format is well suited for images with texts, line art, and sharp contrasts. Third one is lossless, meaning the image retains all its original data and quality. After mentioning those advantages, let's talk about one disadvantage and that is file size. PNGs typically have larger file sizes than JPEGs, especially for very colorful images or photographs. PNGs are not only used for images with transparent backgrounds. Let's consider that you have image with background. So which format is best to use? If the image is a photograph or has lots of colors and gradients, JPEG is likely the better choice due to its smaller file size. If the image contains texts, sharp contrasts, or needs to maintain high fidelity, PNG might be preferred, even with the background. The next on the list is SVG. For logos, icons, and other vector-based designs, consider using this format. It's an XML-based vector image format that remains sharp at any size and often has smaller file sizes than raster images like PNGs and JPEGs. The last on our list is WebP, a newer image format developed by Google. WebP offers both lossy and lossless compression, and supports transparency. It's designed to provide better compression than JPEG and PNG, leading to faster web page loading times. However, the downside of this format is that it's not supported in every browser. After talking about all of these file formats, let's see what are their use cases. In this video, I'll be using Figma to export files. Let's start with JPEG. These images here are photographs and don't require a transparent background, making JPEG format suitable for exporting them. All we have to do here is select the image, go to the export panel and set the format to JPEG. After that, I just need to click on export button name my image and save it to my PC. After all of that done, I just need to go back to the div hunt and upload all the images I saved. Now, all of my images are uploaded and ready to use. All I have to do now is set these images to my tags and my work is complete. Let's move on to the next example. This image here has a transparent background and since JPEG doesn't support transparency, we will use the PNG format here. Just like before, I need to export my image to my PC, but now in PNG format. After that, I can return to the builder, 
upload the image and assign it to my tag. And now I've successfully uploaded my transparent image. An interesting thing with transparent images is that they can inherit the background from their parent tags or you can even set a background color directly to them. Finally, we've come to the most interesting format, SVG. Let's take this small arrow for example. I'll go ahead and export it in SVG format. After saving it to my PC, I can return to the builder, upload it and assign it to my tag. Now, what's the magic with this format? Well, to explain that, let me zoom in on this JPEG image. You'll notice that after a certain point of zooming, this image becomes blurry. That happens because this image is constructed with pixels, and as you zoom in, those pixels get bigger and bigger, causing a loss in image quality. However, this is not the case with SVG format. If I go to my arrow and start zooming in, you'll see that this image never gets blurry. That's because SVG images are not constructed with pixels. Instead, they are made with code, which keeps them sharp and maintains their quality regardless of how much you zoom in or resize them. On this page, we can find various examples of SVG usage. For instance, these checkboxes here. And if I keep scrolling, you can see these stars, which are also in SVG format. Even the logos at the bottom of the page are exported in SVG which is fantastic, because if I increase their size, their quality will remain unaffected. They will still be as sharp no matter how much I zoom in or resize them. Let's discuss a relatively new format known as WebP. Unfortunately, Figma doesn't allow direct export to WebP. Instead, you'll export your files in JPEG or PNG format and then use a conversion software in your web browser. I prefer using TinyPNG, but you can choose any other software you like. TinyPNG can convert your image to WebP and compress it at the same time. Once it's done, you can download a zip file which will contain your image which is converted to a WebP format. And as we said before, WebP supports transparency. So my image that was originally PNG and had a transparent background will also be transparent when converted to WebP. Now that we covered how to convert your image to WebP format, let's discuss its practical use. Imagine that you're running a blog website. You'll likely have numerous images within your blog posts. As your blog grows with more posts, the number of images on your website increases significantly. To ensure your website remains fast and efficient, it's beneficial to keep image file sizes to a minimum. WebP is particularly useful in this scenario because it can be compressed to remarkably small file sizes, saving your valuable storage space and contributing to a faster loading website. Let's discuss the sizes of these file formats before diving into optimization. The smallest is SVG, which is naturally very compact and usually doesn't need optimization. Next is JPEG, while the largest among these formats is PNG. Now, let's discuss the most crucial part of this video and that is reducing file size. All the images I previously used were already well optimized by the designer. But let's say you have an image you like and want it on your website. For this example, I already prepared one JPEG image. If you want to optimize a PNG, the process will be exactly the same. Before I start making any changes to this image, I will save it and check how large it is. You can see that this image is 3.5 megabytes in size, which is too much. To reduce the file size of this image, firstly, when we compare these two images, the old one is significantly smaller in dimensions than the new one. So let's go ahead and adjust the size of this image a bit. Let's check this option here so that the height and width of this image scale proportionally. Then we'll set the same width as our old image. After these adjustments, I'll save this image and go check how much we reduced the file size. You can see that now our file size is more than 10 times smaller. However, we're not done yet. We can further reduce the size of this file. To do that, I'll again go back to TinyPNG website. There are many websites that can compress images on the internet, but I personally prefer this one. All I have to do here is upload my image and wait for TinyPNG to work its magic. 
After it's done, I can see how much this file size has been reduced. Now, all that is left is to download my image and let's compare the final image with the original one. You can see how much we reduced the file size of this image. But now, let's check if this image lost some quality. Now, if I go back to the builder and set this image to my tag, you'll see that it looks pretty good, considering that we massively reduced its file size. Even if I check the live site, this image will still look good. However, in some cases, your images might appear more blurry if you follow all of these steps. This can happen when you have detailed images like human faces or similar subjects. If that happens, there are a few things you can do to minimize the blurriness. First, you need to go back to the Figma and increase the size of your image. Don't overdo it with values. Go with some smaller values and if you're not satisfied, just increase them bit by bit. After that, you can compress it again with TinyPNG. You can repeat this process until you make your image look good without excessive blurriness. Or, in some cases, if your image is already small enough when you export it from Figma, you can completely avoid compressing your image with softwares like TinyPNG. It's important to understand that when you optimize images, they will inevitably lose some quality. This loss occurs because you are reducing the number of pixels in the image to make it smaller in size on disk. Naturally, when you reduce the number of pixels, the remaining pixels become larger, which can make the image appear increasingly blurry as you reduce those pixels. However, your objective when optimizing images is to reduce the number of pixels just enough so that the image still looks sharp and clean to the human eye. With all of this said, you should be mindful of when to optimize your images. For instance, if you have a website where high image quality isn't crucial, you can optimize them to improve loading speed. However, if you are for example a professional photographer and require the highest image quality, you may need to accept larger file sizes for your website, even if it impacts your loading speed. That will be everything for this video. I hope that you learned what are the differences between file formats, when to use which one, and how to optimize your images. Until the next time, happy building!